Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you for being here today. Um, happy Sunday. I'm recording this on Saturday, but hopefully it'll be up tomorrow on Sunday. So happy Sunday. I hope everybody is enjoying their weekend. Um, if this is your first time coming to this channel or visiting this channel, if you are interested in tarot cards, tarot readings, true crime stories, unsolved cases, um, and maybe even a little bit of candle making, please consider subscribing. I really do appreciate that. And of course, thank you to all of you who come back every week. Um, this was another case that was requested and it is going to be um, about the lost boys of Pickering, Ontario. So again, this is another one of those rabbit hole cases. I think they all are, to be honest with you. Um, if you dig into any one of these cases, and, and really kind of look at different articles and websites and videos. It's just like, wow, um, on just about all of them. So this one is no different. Uh, it is an older case. Uh, I think this happened in 1995. So you're looking at 25, 26 years now. So getting close to the three decade mark. Um, but I think for today's reading, I, I do have a little something that I'm going to read just so everybody is kind of brought up to the same thing so we know what we're reading about. And then we'll get right into the card pulls today. So um, I will go ahead and start. The Lost Boys of Pickering involves six teenagers who disappeared after a party in Pickering, Ontario over two decades ago. It all started on the evening of March 17, 1995, after these six young men left a party to go down to a nearby beach looking for an adventure. It is said that the boys may have taken a four-meter imitation Boston Whaler motorboat and a three-wheeled paddle boat from different marinas on Frenchman's Bay. It is also believed that these young men then went out onto the cold, icy waters of Lake Ontario without any life jackets. Jay Boyle, Michael Cummins, Daniel Higgins, Chad Smith, Robbie Rumble, and Jamie LaFerbe were never seen again. Three of the boys, Michael, Jamie, and Robbie, were caught on surveillance at 1.48 a.m. entering the East Shore Marina. Sometime between 2.30 and 3 a.m., local residents also heard the sound of a motorboat out on the lake. The next morning, two boats were reported stolen from two separate marinas. The boys had first been reported as missing on Friday by two of the girlfriends who believed something was strange when they had not heard back from any of the young men since they had left the party. However, the police did not take their concerns too seriously at that time. It wasn't until those two boats were reported as being stolen that police began to make the connections between the two. By 2 p.m. on Saturday, which was 36 hours after the boys had been missing, a massive search was underway, but they found nothing. Thousands of volunteers joined the search, but no trace of the boys or the boats were ever found. The only item ever found on the lake was a gas can believed to have belonged to the whaler. The police believed that the boats capsized and hypothermia gripped the boys within a matter of minutes. According to the Durham Regional Police, this case remains open, unsolved missing persons case. However, the police have stopped actively looking for the boys. That is, until Bruce Ricketts, a part-time investigator for the family of one of the boys, began working on the case for free. Bruce has brought up some important key questions and concerns in this case, including... Why has the Niagara police gone to extreme and unusual lengths to not release any information on the case or cooperate in any way, specifically in regards to the unidentified remains that were recovered in 1998 by the Niagara Regional Police and the mystery surrounding the red Levi jeans? Um, also, uh, and I'll get into the jeans later on, but that is something that I, I feel is important, are these red Levi jeans. Um, there was remains found or discovered in 1998. Apparently at that time, the police did say that uh, the remains, with the remains, were a pair of red Levi jeans. Um, it just so happens that I think, I think it was, I'm going to have to double check, but... 
I think it was one of the boys, Jay Boyle, if I'm not mistaken, who apparently owned a pair of red Levi jeans and the family did find pictures of him wearing those red Levi jeans. However, um, these jeans were either lost or this evidence was botched or it was hidden or misplaced. I don't know what came of it, but um, long story short, the families uh, fought to have DNA testing done on these jeans and these remains. Um, come to find out years later, uh, it wasn't a pair of red Levi jeans that the police had in their custody. It was a pair of like orange corduroy pants. Um, there's just a lot of confusion and it seems like a lot of covering up, to be honest with you. Um, what happened to this original pair of red Levi jeans? Um, was it red Levi jeans or was it orange corduroy pants? Um, you know, so it's just kind of, there, there's, I, I'm not really, I don't feel like explaining it well enough, but there's a lot of um, questions as far as these red Levi jeans are concerned. So I do want to keep that in mind while we're reading because um, I'm looking for anything that could indicate, you know, something red, red pants, red, you know, anything like that. So I, I do want to mention that. Another thing that we're concerned about is that this whaler boat, uh, this Boston whaler boat is considered unsinkable. Now, it is an imitation whaler boat, but it is still very hard to have one of these boats sink. And so um, the police are really kind of leaning towards the idea that these boats capsized and these boys went into the cold icy waters and you know hypothermia kicked in but where are the boats you know um wh where is this quote-unquote unsinkable boston whaler where did it go where did this paddle boat go these are not things that are easily sinkable um if these boys had fallen over or or something that had happened like that that where they ended up in the water the boats i'm sure would probably remain and so the boats have never been found either so very strange um i also believe that there was no questionable weather that night um you know this is not out in the middle of the sea this is lake ontario and although it is a very huge lake it is also a lake and it is, I believe, the smallest lake of the five Great Lakes. So um, I, I just don't think that there were any uh, 100 foot waves that night or anything to indicate that there was a storm or anything like that to, you know, do heavy damage to these boats. Um, and, you know, just the overall question I have is why have the police been so unwilling to release information to the families and cooperate with the families? These are missing, missing boys, the six of them. This is a massive missing persons case, a group of six young men just up and vanish. And it just seems like these families have had one brick wall after another while working with the um, Niagara and the Durham Police Department. It just seems like they are unwilling to work with these families and uh, on a missing persons case, I don't know why. So that's that's something we wanna keep in mind. Um, and then we have another couple of things that I wanna keep in mind as well is, you know, if it wasn't an accident or if something did not happen to these boys, did they by chance leave intentionally? Uh, I'm not sure which boy it was, but there was one boy uh, right prior to him leaving that night. He had a necklace and I guess he loved this necklace. It had all these charms on it. He wore it every day. And um, apparently that night before going out, he gave that necklace to his mom and he told her to always wear it. Um, and, you know, she, I don't think she thought much of it at the time until after the fact that he was gone that she thought back to that night when he had given her his necklace and asked her to wear it. And so um, I believe that, you know, she kind of is under the impression that perhaps these boys had a plan to leave. Um, on top of that, there have been some sightings of, I think, a couple of these boys. Um, nothing definitive, but that is a question that's surrounding this case is if, you know, something happened to them out on that lake uh, if something was done to them out on that lake or did they leave intentionally. Um, so those are some of the things that we're going to try to find out in, in this reading. So for today, I feel kind of like I want to do the traditional Rider Waite to start out. Um, 
so that that's what we're going to start out with and then i'll see how that goes and then maybe we can pull a few cards with the dark grimoire um trying to figure out how to say this so um while looking at the pictures of these six boys or these six young men you know you've got the, these are i believe high school aged boys but i think jay boyle um also had a daughter so he had a baby at that time um when looking at these six boys or these six young men i am really curious to know if they were really truly a group of friends and i'm not i'm trying to figure out how to to word this so that it's not um i don't think i've ever come up um with reading or finding anything or any kind of proof that indicates the opposite that they weren't friends per se but i i am looking at these pictures of these young men and i'm just um i'm having a hard time believing fully that they were all very close friends i don't know there's just something about the images of them um where i'm wondering if maybe a few of them were friends and maybe you know, a few of them weren't, I, I don't know. And so that is something that's bothering me in my mind. And um, I, I'm curious to see if any kind of um, bickering, fighting, arguing uh, type of cards like fives are going to come out. Um, it, it's just something that's just popping in my mind with these boys. And uh, I don't know why. Uh, like I said, I have not come across anything to suggest that they weren't all friends. I'd be curious to know if the girlfriends have been asked or if other friends in the school, high school classmates, if they are coming forward and saying, yes, these these six guys were always hanging out together. They were really close. They were tight friends um, because I'm just not getting that vibration that they were. I think that there were friends amongst them, but possibly not all six of them friendly with one another. So... It's just something that I, and I could be totally wrong, it's just something that kind of clicked with me when I was really studying the picture of all six of them. So having said that, we will get into the drawing. And um, I do think I want to start this reading out with a couple of yes or no questions. Uh, number one, I just want to ask, you know, the question that I think that we're all asking you know, asking ourselves and if they're still alive. That's the question. Again, I do want to put out, I always forget to say this. This is for entertainment purposes only. Um, you know, I, I'll just leave it at that. This is entertainment purposes, so I don't, you know, want anybody to... Um, it, it's just so... It's a very um, cautious thing when you're pulling cards on, you know, someone's family. Um you know, if they're not asking for a reading, you have the stranger reading cards on a member of your family and I don't ever want to be disrespectful or anything like that. So I, I just kind of want to put that out there as well. All right, so we have the Lost Boys of Pickering, Ontario. And I want to know if they are alive. Yes or no, are these boys alive? Okay, so for yes or no, the Seven of Swords is that trickery, thievery card. It would definitely be a no. Um, to me, this is saying more than just no. Um, this is... This is to me saying I, I don't feel like they are alive, unfortunately, but there's definitely more to the story that we don't know. There is some, there's some deception uh, surrounding this story. I don't believe that we have all the facts. And this is a seven after all. And we have six boys. We have six young men that are missing. Um, and if I'm looking at the number of this card, I want to know who represents number seven. So uh, was there someone else out there that night? with these young men because to me this is definitely indicating um you know deception right off the bat 
Okay, so let's let's go ahead and ask um, if this is foul play. If there was foul play involved in this case. Okay, so uh, again, the Two of Pentacles. It's not a bad card. It's not you know. I'm, I'm, it's not anything negative. Uh, this would be definitely a yes card for me. Um, and I, when I do my yes or no questions, it's basically just on the connotation of that card. What is the vibe? Is it a good or is it a negative? And you can kind of make your determination on whether it's going to be a yes or a no. So um, when I'm asking, is there foul play involved in this case? The two of pentacles is, a, a, it's a pretty decent card. Um, you know, a balance card, you know, infinity card. And so I'm going to take this as a yes, there probably is something. And then we've got it with that thievery card or that deception card. So, um, you know, I do feel like there's some, some more to this story. Um, and I'm curious to see what's going to come out because, and look at this, we've got the water. There's something about the Rider Waite deck that I wanted to use today for some reason. So I'm kind of curious to see what's going to come out of it. But we've got water, right, in the background. Um, and it's pretty turbulent. We've got some waves. So let's keep that in mind as well. We've got a boat. We've got two boats, as a matter of fact. We've got one larger one and one smaller one. So very interesting that I wanted to use this deck because um, th this is uh, something to keep in mind. And guess what? We've got those red pants. We've got the red pants. We've got the water, the waves, the bigger boat, the smaller boat. I mean, I'm looking at this as being the Boston Whaler and this one being the tricycle or the, the tri-paddle paddle boat or whatever it's called. Um, and then we've got something here that's off balance. Okay. So something's not right because whenever I see this infinity and it's, you know, turned a little bit off balance, um, to me, that is off balance. Something, something's not right. Something's, something's going on. So definitely these two cards to start out with this reading are, um, you know, not, not the best to be honest with you. It's concerning, but Definitely we, we need to figure out what happened that night because more happened than we know. Um, so was someone else involved in this? Was someone out was someone else out there with you guys that night? Um, the eight of cups. Well, again, if we're going by number, we've got seven, possibly eight individuals if you're looking at it like that seven or eight individuals that could be involved in this case and again we've got water we've got night nighttime um walking away leaving uh some could argue really if you're looking at this case some of the people that believe that these boys left by their own will they could argue that this represents that, that these were these boys walking away, leaving their friends, leaving their family, leaving their lives behind and, you know, starting a new life. I don't necessarily think I believe that. I don't think that that's what's going on simply because of this. Um, this right here tells me that there's secrets and things about this case that the public, possibly even the family, does not know about or isn't aware of. And with the seven and the eight, I'm kind of feeling like potentially there could be more people involved in this. So having said that, let's go ahead. I'm going to add these back to the pile. I'm going to shuffle and then I'm going to pull out the regular reading and see what comes out. So um, what can we find out about the Lost Boys of Pickering, Ontario, 1995? 1995, Lake Ontario. we had three that fell okay this one again interesting okay hanged man uh, that's 
it's not good. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so let me move these so that you guys can see properly because I've got a couple questions here. Some of the things that are coming out is concerning me. Um, number one, this case is called the Lost Boys of Pickering, right? So I want to know who this King of Swords is. Um, this is not any of the boys. This is someone older. This is someone older and someone in more of an authoritative position. I always like to think of the kings or the queens sometimes to be men or women in their 40s, 50s possibly. Uh, this is not one of the boys. So we've got this person here. And this is not a person that you want as an enemy. This is very a sh very sharp person, very quick reacting person, very vocal, very eloquent when he speaks. This is someone that we have to try to figure out who this person is. Now, this could be potentially uh, a police officer or a detective that is working on the case. It could also be, you know, we've got this private investigator that is helping the families out, or I think he, he started on as helping as we're helping one of the families out and then just kind of turned into um, helping all of them. And I know he works for free, so this could potentially be him, but this is not the boys. So let's keep that in mind. This one here also concerns me. It's the Seven of Cups. And that kind of tells me that they were probably not in their right state of mind that night. Now, they were at this party and, uh, you know, we all know that they were probably drinking a little bit. I don't know if there was anything else. I don't know if there was smoking or anything like that going on. But it was a party and these were high school boys. They were, you know, it, it is what it is. So this right here tells me that... Um, their their minds were not very clear this is a cloudy a cloudy card um, and sometimes when i think of this card i feel like it's somebody that doesn't real i don't sometimes i feel like this is a good card for somebody who um possibly is under the influence but it wasn't self-induced somebody that could be drugged so I don't think it's that in this case. I think it is that they were drinking. They were willingly drinking and, and just partying and having a, a, a good old time. Um, but definitely this says to me that their minds were not in a clear space. Okay, they had clouded judgment. This is their, this is their judgment that night. It was not good. And I'm going to go ahead and skip from that to the star. Because right away when I, I seen the star come out, it bothered me because of the nakedness. Now, normally that represents purity. But in this case, we've got the stars at night. We've got the dark skies. Um, you know, we've got water. We've got, um, you know, no clothes. And so normally I wouldn't say this about this card, but right now I feel like it's saying that they were not appropriately dressed for the conditions out there on that lake. Um, I, I, I think that they, you know, were definitely out on the water, you know, definitely on land in the water. It was at night. Um, but the, these young men were not prepared for whatever it is that they encountered out there. Now, this was March and I also live in the Great Lakes region. I'm in the Lake Michigan area. And I know that we have these lake towns, okay, and I'm kind of comparing this Pickering to some of the local lake towns around here. I know that these lake towns, I would not go to them mid-March and go out on the lake at night um, and uh, probably, you know, n not be dressed appropriately. It's something that you're going to bundle up. You're going to have earmuffs, gloves jackets it's really not anything uh, you know even even in March sometimes it's hard to even know if it's not frozen over because sometimes it can be even frozen over so it wasn't a good idea to go out there it, it just really wasn't they weren't thinking clearly they just were not thinking about the the precautions or the consequences and they were not dressed appropriately they were underdressed they were underdressed for the conditions that they were going out into um, I'm not quite sure what the norm is like I said I grew up in the Lake Michigan area so I don't 
I, I don't know in, in this area if it was when these boys supposedly told their friends and their girlfriends that they were going to go out on a boat and mess around, you know, I'm assuming that the next question from someone was, why are you going to go out on the boat right now? It's like in the middle of winter and it's nighttime and it's going to be cold. And these lake towns are cold. I mean, it is no joke. Okay. I I can drive a half an hour to the nearest lake town and it is like probably 20 degrees colder there than it is here. Um, This is not an area that you want to be just, you know, playing around and and going out on the lake at two, three o'clock in the morning. It's just too cold. So something's going on. I I don't know what it is, but something's going on. Whatever's going on, though, there was some defensive actions. There was some sort of this nine of wands tells me that there was some sort of battle that possibly they were going through either that night or had been going through for a while because whenever you get into higher numbers like the eights, the nines, the tens, you're looking at a pattern of something, a pattern of behavior. And this is like battles. This guy has, these wands in the back represent the battles that this man has went through and conquered. Um, He is kind of beat up from it, but he has come out okay. He, he, you know, he's got some, some scars and some battle, battle wounds and whatnot, but he, he survived it in the end. And this could sometimes represent that he's still got one more battle to go, but, but he's close to being done. So what was it that these boys or some of these boys or one of these boys, even what was it that they were dealing with? Um, are we talking about one of them or are we talking about all of them? But there, somebody here has got some things that they're going through or dealing with, okay? And it's been, I think, going on for a while. I think that this indicates that there was some issues um, prior to that night. Something's going on with one of these young men, if not more than one, um, you know. And, and we've got a lot of high numbers. We've got seven, eight, <laughs> nine eight, 10, 10. Okay. I mean, it just, there, I I almost feel like it's an indication that whatever was happening in these boys' life or some of these boys' life, uh, it, it was coming to a boil. Like it was coming to its boiling point. Okay. Um, I feel like there was something going on and it kind of just all built up to this night. So, you know, I don't, I don't quite know what it is yet. So, but I, I feel like there's something else going on. There's something else at play here. Um, something else is going on. And, uh, I, I think that there's a reason why they went out there. I don't know. I don't quite know what it is yet, but there is, there's definitely something that, um, is, uh, not right here. There's some issues with some of these boys. So, or, or all of them, possibly some issues that they're struggling with. And then, so we've got the 10 of pentacles Uh, again. This is, you know, to me, it's just, to me, this kind of represents, um, well, you know, this can be, uh, obviously it's wealth, it's pentacles, but Um, sometimes when I pull this card, I feel like it's a prominent family or, um, you know, there, there's some, there's some affluence somewhere. Uh, it can also represent, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like, uh, traditions and, um, just things like that. And so I kind of feel like this is, you know, could be representing the families of these young men. Um, the fact that there is money involved kind of, hmm, hold on a second. Um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of feel like there is, you know, when you have a small town like that, you know, I grew up in a small town in Michigan and, um, you know, you have uh, a small population, everyone kind of knows everyone and everybody knows who the, you know, top families are. And, you know, everybody knows everyone's business. You have one grocery store, you go into the grocery store, you know, everyone there, right? 
I don't know the size of this town. Um, I didn't look it up enough, but I just wonder if there's some affluent families in the area. Um, and you know, what, where did these boys or any of these boys fit in, in that, um, area, in that, in that description? So were these boys part of the affluent families? Were they not? Um, you know, was there any kind of issue with, um, if they weren't part of these family, I, I don't know. I'm kind of, this is where I'm going with this card. I, I have to be honest with you. I feel like there's some prominent family or families in this town. Um, and you know, that, that's all I'll say. I'm just going to leave it at that. But to me that that's coming out, I kind of do feel like it's that. So there's something going on and we know we've got secrets. We've got lies. We've got deception. Um, you know, there, there's, there's some struggles here going on there. Who is this person? You know, are these per, is this, are these two connected somehow? Maybe the King of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles. Did these boys, um, did one of these boys or um, any of these boys get involved with anyone in this town that possibly um, they shouldn't have or, you know, associated with themselves, um, with anyone connected to a, an affluent family of some sort. I don't know. That's kind of where I'm, I'm leaning, to be honest. Um, and then we have the hanged man. Um, yeah, I, I was not happy to see this card. Um, so anybody who um, kind of reads along <laughs> with these readings. You're probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking of. Uh, you know, this is a person who is tied and bound and upside down. So, you know, that, and, and we know nothing has been found of these young men. And that is not in itself the strangest part of the case it's the fact that the boat the boats have never been found so you know it, it's possible I, I I definitely think foul play was involved in this case guys I really do I, I this was not an accident this wasn't a big uh gust of wind that came in and knocked them over it wasn't anything there's something going on with this case and I do believe it was foul play and I do believe that when these young men went into this lake, that it is possible that their hands were bound and possibly their feet. So that's what I'm going to say. Um, entertainment purposes only. I just have to throw that in. So there, there, but there's something, there's something going on. They weren't prepared. I, I don't know if this started out as a quote unquote adventure and it turned into something else but they weren't prepared for it. They weren't in their right mind, right state of mind. And then we've got, you know, this is our second infinity symbol that we've come across in this reading so far. Um, we had the two of pentacles and we had this and, um, you know, that there to me, uh, we've got inner strength, compassion, Honestly, I, I kind of take this as they um, were, they didn't go down without a fight. I, I feel like they're, they're, they put up as much of a struggle or as much of a fight that they could given the situation. Yeah, th this, this is not, it's not a good pull. So let me, let me keep going here. What's going on with, let's ask some clarity on that 10 of pentacles and that king of swords see what we can get on the ten of pentacles and the king of swords ten of pentacles and the king of swords ten of pentacles mm. the king of swords we've got a mom figure we've got a feminine female motherly figure coming out We've also got a king. We've got, this could potentially be a, a couple, a partnership, a mom and dad. 
um, a husband and wife, there, there's some connection I feel like with these two. Now, right off the bat, I don't get necessarily bad vibes with the Empress because most of the time that's a really good card. It's, you know, it's that protector, that motherly figure, you know, love, compassion, always there for you. So um, what's going on with the mother? Is this one of the boys' mothers? Um, let's put it aside for a second. Because I'm, I'm really curious about that one. We've got the knight. So this is action-based. All the knights I consider as, you know, my action cards. This is doing. This is, you know, uh, it's a pentacle. So we're talking about earthly possessions, material possessions, money, finances, things like that. And I, I was asking for a clarity for the ten of pentacles. So I kind of feel like this is this whoever this is representing it's like they they were there was some sort of plan there was some sort of um thing that this family was i, I don't know i just kind of feel like i'm i'm almost getting like this crazy ass like horror movie or mystery thing that that went down in this town like did one of these boys mess with you know somebody prominent in the town's daughter and you know that just wasn't gonna happen and they got lured out onto this lake for some reason I, I, that's kind of where my mind is going and I feel like this here is a prominent family or the institution of of or the um I'm even kind of wondering if this could be the police department to be honest with you um and I, I kind of feel like this and this and this are all kind of connected. Let me pull another one on the police department because I kind of feel like, okay, what's going on with the police? Are they hiding any information? Are they hiding any information? So um, there, there's something going on with this police, whether it's the Durham, whether it's the Niagara um, Regional Police, but we've got... <laughs> Hmm. that's not good um this was not weather related i can say that like when i'm looking at these cards for a fact i feel confident for myself entertainment wise i feel confident that this was not a big wave this was not just, um, oops, they fell over or somebody fell in and the other ones went in to jump after them or to save them. It was not that. Uh, there was something going on. Remember I said that this is usually sometimes when I'm pulling this card for crime related, it's sometimes, um, I think of it as under the influence, but you're not aware of it. I know these guys were drinking. Was there anything else that night that got into their system? Possibly. Was it just alcohol? Were they the ones that served themselves? Now there is that surveillance footage. Um, I would love to see the surveillance footage of the three young men going on to the marina and how they were walking, how they were behaving. You know, because something's not right there there's something going on here these guys this is bound this is bound blindfolded trapped now again in a in a quote-unquote regular reading this is the swords this is mental this is in your mind this is your thought so usually this is kind of like a metaphorical bound but not in this case i don't think so now it's possible that you know somebody in this group maybe felt bound or felt trapped but I don't that could be it but I this to me here tells me that in and, and look she's standing in the water <laughs> um I'm wondering if one of the mothers of these boys or one of them knows something that is uh, she's not able to say or suspects. I wonder if a mom, some someone's mom suspects something. Let's pull a few, a few more. Judgment. The 
high priest. The Knight of Swords. Oh, here, hold on a second. Let me. I always feel like no one can see anything with all the cards behind it. All right, so um, I feel like this potentially could be one of the mothers. And I just literally said, I wonder if one of these mothers suspects something or knows something. And then we pull the high priestess. Someone knows something. This woman here, this mother, because I do believe now that we've pulled a few cards, that's why I like to sometimes just say, okay, let's come back to that, you know, put it aside. Oftentimes, if you continue to draw more cards, it'll become clear as to what the message is for that one card that you put aside. I wasn't quite sure who this was, but I do believe it is a mother. Okay, possibly more than one, but at least one of those moms has a gut intuition as to what happened to her son. There's something else going on. Don't forget that we pulled that seven of swords right at the beginning of this pull. It was the first card that came out, the seven of swords. Something happened out there with these boys and it wasn't it wasn't um an accident. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't weather related. There's been too much bullshit with the police departments on this. They've been really kind of acting suspicious with the evidence and trying to work with the families or rather not working with the families. And there's something I feel like is going on. There's going to be some karma, I think, eventually down the road. I don't know when that's going to be, but there is to me judgment. That is karma. Um, and to me that the fact that the fact that this is even coming up, if this were weather related or accidental, I don't think that the judgment would come up. The fact that the judgment card is coming out tells me that there is karma that needs to happen, which probably means that something that wasn't good was done to these boys. So I feel that the fact that this judgment card came out in and of itself means that there is some sort of foul play. I really do feel like that's what the cards are, are um, you know, saying here. And then we've got the king, uh, the, the knight of swords. So look at this if you look at the um if you look at the knight of swords if you just look at the card um you know we've got this knight that's really going in this is this is speed this is fast okay so whatever happened that night happened quickly uh it did not take very long for it to happen um but this is you know, I always look at the wind, the direction of the wind on this card, and you have the trees blowing this way, and you kind of have the wind going this way, and the knight and its horse are kind of going against the grain. They're going against the wind, um, and it to me, it just, it, you know, is it because he's going in the wrong direction? Is it because he's up against some sort of a battle? Um, you know, is, so I, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like whoever did whatever it is that they did um, were were probably aware of the fact that it wasn't what they should have been doing. Um, and they know that they shouldn't have been doing it, but they went ahead and they did it anyways. They went against whatever um, they have inside of them and they did it regardless. So that's kind of how I'm looking at that, that card. Um, so let's pull a few more and then I'm... Let's see here. Can we get any idea of what happened and and why? What's going on here? What happened to these boys and why? What's going on? Okay, so... To me, this one here uh, speaks to me right away because of the snow. Um, this incident did not happen in the winter time. I kind of do feel like March is still winter time, especially if you live up here in this area, um, and especially in Ontario. Uh, to me, March is winter. Um, we are still dealing with snow and horribleness up until probably 
late April. Okay, that's just the way it is. And so I'm looking at this this card here, and to me, it's speaking of that night. These guys were cold. Um, I don't think that... I don't... I honestly don't feel like they went out there by choice. That might have been what they told people. Maybe if that's what they did, if they really... I don't... I don't know if they really necessarily went to go out there on this lake and play around or goof off on March 17th on Lake Ontario. The weather was not right. The weather was not appropriate for it. I just told you I, I live literally like a half an hour from the nearest lake town, Lake Michigan. Um, this is not activities for mid-March. This is not normal activities. Now, I don't know about in this town if people go out on the lake in March or April, but it's not really common. And so I, I don't necessarily know if if this was something that would have been unusual. Um, I'm really curious to know if, you know, anybody has asked the girlfriends or any of the classmates and said, hey, did you guys typically go out? at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning out onto the lake in the middle of March. Is that normal? Is that normal for you guys to do? Because it just seems a little odd. Um, this is being cold. This is being cold and kind of not, you know, appropriate for the weather. I don't know. Some, something's going on. Um, then we've got the four of cups. To me, this is like my tantrum card. It's like um, just that, you know, kind of, you're not wanting what's you're, you're not you're not wanting what's being given to you you don't want the opportunity that's in front of you someone's offering you something and you don't want it you don't want to do it um is this something that the boys were dealing with did someone approach them did they did they say something and the boys were like no because we've got we've got some sort of a decision we've got a choice this is two of the swords. That's my shitty decision card. And then there's something that's being offered to them that they don't want to do. I don't think they were going out on that lake by choice for an adventure. I, I, I don't I don't think it was that. I think I think they were either asked to go out, they were told to go out, they were, there was something, there was another, there's someone else or other people involved in this. And um, I think they took advantage. I think the boys were drinking. It, they, they were at the party, they were drinking. And whoever this is probably took advantage of their uh, situation. The fact that it was, you know, a party night, that they were under the influence, their minds weren't gr great. They were you know, and, and just e it just was a perfect opportunity to seize upon for a, um, you know, perpetrator. I, I just think that the elements were really good for somebody to come in and do foul play. Um, and these boys were not uh, equipped for any of the elements that night. Um, you know, we've got water, we've got darkness, you know, we've got these things these rocks or whatever in the water I mean we've got the lake coming through here and look again we have we have two we have two rocks and this is a two so we have the Boston Whaler and we have the paddle boat I just kind of feel like there was there was a, a dis there was something that a, I don't know I, I think somebody asked them to go out there or somebody perhaps was going to meet them out there or maybe um, I don't know. I, I almost kind of feel like it was a luring type of situation, to be honest with you, or possibly, um, no, I, I think they were lured. I really do. I, I, I kind of do. And then the queen of pentacles and the nine of pentacles, this is money. This is again, money. This is wealth. This is, um, who, who in this town is wealthy? Some, something's going on. There's some, there's some wealth, um, happening here. So there's something going on with that. Were you guys lured out onto that lake? Were you lured out onto that lake? Hmm. So if I were to use my method of yes or no, this um, to me would be no. This would be no, that they weren't lured. 
Um, four of pentacles. We've got a lot of pentacles coming up, man. We've got a lot of money, a lot of finances, a lot of material possessions. Lots of money. Lots of money, lots of swords. Hmm. Somebody holding on to their wealth. Someone holding on to their money. Holding on to their possessions, attachments, attachments. We've got a city. This is someone who doesn't want to let go of what they have. Hmm. We know that people heard um, a motorboat around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know. I don't know. Let's draw one more card on this deck, and then I think I'm already at 50 minutes. Oh, my God. The hour flies by. Huh. We've got another card with no clothing. That's what I'm taking from this. Um, I also take this that uh, we have... Um, you know, I, I honestly, I hate saying this, but I, I, I kind of do feel like the boys, um, the young men are no longer here. Um, they have probably passed on, but I, I do kind of feel like this is a good omen card saying that they are in a, in a good spot themselves, regardless of the situation that happens surrounding them. Um, I'm a big believer that a person's case or situation doesn't have to be solved and closed for them to have peace in the next world. And so I kind of feel like I'm getting, this is like the first card that I've gotten a good vibe from since I started pulling cards on this case. I do feel like regardless of the situation, these young men are okay themselves. They they are okay. They are happy. They are content. They are free. Um, they are warm. Um, the, it Complete opposite. I'm glad that I ended on this card because that kind of gives me some good feelings as far as this reading is concerned. So um, I, I'm going to call it quits on that deck and I'm going to pull just a few of the um, cards of the dark grimoire. Um, I definitely do feel like we have gotten that this isn't an accident. I don't, I don't think it's an accident. I think that there's some foul play. There's some things about it that we don't know. And I think that it's possible one of the moms or more than one of those moms suspects something. something going on um i'd be curious about you know the financial situation of you know some of the people in that town a lot of money coming up these boys were dealing with something we've got the that nine of wands so these boys you know th there there was some issues that one or more of them were dealing with um, so th there's some stuff going on. Definitely they were not in their right mind that night. That seven of cups tells me that they were definitely under the influence. Their mind was not right. They were cold that night. They weren't dressed appropriately for it. So what else? What else can we learn about that night? 1995, Pickering, Lake Ontario. All right, we got three that came out. So we've got the Six of Swords. We've got the um, we've got that Two of Swords. Oh, we got four that came out. The Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords again. The Hierophant. Hmm. Interesting for a second. Let's just take this for a second because I'm really curious about that Hierophant. Now, to me, the Hierophant doesn't always necessarily mean that it has to be religion. It can be institution as well. And in this case, I kind of feel like it is um, the police. The police in this case. I really do feel like they dropped the ball in this case. They did not put 100% effort into it. And I, I really don't like when I'm reading on these cases and you see that you know, families are trying to get information from the police and 
it is taking years for them to get a response from the police department and this is a missing persons case now granted they didn't take the they didn't the police did not take the initial call very seriously I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on that because I do believe it was St. Patrick's Day and that was a very highly celebrated and probably still is celebrated um, holiday over there. And, you know, for these boys, these six young men to go out and drink on St. Patrick's Day and not necessarily make it home right away. I, I, I guess I could understand why the police were hesitant to consider anything suspicious right off the bat, but, you know, it didn't it didn't really kick off. This case didn't kick off until probably a good 36 to 40 hours after these boys went missing. And I can't say that they did a phenomenal job once they started looking for these boys. And especially when these other remains were discovered in 1998, and you've got this whole case of the red Levi jeans um, and, and just a lack of cooperation uh, with the police and the family and the private investigator. The private investigator has really, really struggled with this case, trying to get information, trying to work with these police departments. There's something I feel like it's either negligence or it's intentional. It's got to be one of the two. It's one of the two. It's negligence or it's intentional that they're hiding something. Um, or maybe they're just hiding their negligence. It could be just as simple as that, but there's something going on and I'm looking back at that Seven of Swords. I feel like there's something going on with this case. We do not know the whole story. Um, so I'm I'm thinking that the Hierophant is the institution, the police. Um, I don't think that there is necessarily any religion per se involved in this case. Um, there could be, uh, but I don't feel that that element is really pertaining to this. I feel like there's this is... Um, this is a um, institution, police department is what it is, in my opinion. And then we have the two of swords. We have that shitty decision. We have a choice. There was a choice that these boys had to make that night, and it wasn't, a, it wasn't even an option to make it. This is a choice that you have to make. You have to do either one or the other. You cannot get out of doing it, okay? It's just... There was something that they were forced to do or there was something that they had to do that night and, you know, something that they had to make a decision on. It wasn't a good one, but they had to do it. OK, so I don't I don't know what that is. So what 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 are we talking about? What what was the choice here? What was the decision that you guys had to make? The devil. Damn. <laughs> This hasn't been a really great reading, to be honest with you, from the get-go. And now we're bringing this element into it, the devil. <sighs> Jesus. And look, we've got it in the water. This is probably the only devil card that I've ever seen that the devil was in the water. This is like literally a body of water. And you've got these, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys. No, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got eight guys down here. And you've got this... You've got this devil. You've got this um, this monster surrounding them. It's like he's got them trapped. How many cards did we pull tonight that were a, a trapped card per se? He's got them trapped. <laughs> okay. And then we've got the uh, Six of Swords. So, um, again, I really do like these cards. It's like, um, I like the, I, honestly, I like the creatures in them. They're kind of strange. Um, but I, I honestly, in this case, when I'm looking at this particular Six of Swords, it is a creature. <laughs> it is very much a creature. Uh, one could argue a monster. Um, and then we've got something like that here and we've got something like that here. Um, I kind of feel like, and even if you look at this Hierophant guy, he's got like one huge eye and one small eye. He doesn't look like, um, he doesn't look right, to be honest with you. He doesn't look friendly. And I, I kind of feel like this is indicating that Whoever they came across that night or whoever they came across period in their life or in their lives was 
a monster. I mean, this was somebody that was completely crazy, somebody evil, somebody nasty. They came across something, someone, okay? And this was not an accident. I don't know what happened. I'm curious to know. The Knight of Swords, another Knight of Swords. Look at that, he's got a head. He's got a head and he's got an evil eye and he's got horns. We've already got the devil. Um, they they came across um, some someone crazy. Let me just ask, what happened to the boats? That's what we all want to know, right? We all want to know what happened to the boats. What happened to the paddle boat and the Boston whaler? What happened? The stars. Three pentacles. Ten of swords. What happened to the Boston Whaler? So, um, when I look at these three together and I see um, the star, the three of pentacles, and the ten of swords, I feel like the boats were, um, or the devices were, were moved. I think that it was a group effort. I get group from this. I get group of people. We've got three, we've got 10, we've got the stars. The stars is a lot. It's many. Um, and so I, I kind of feel like there is some sort of group effort with this situation. I don't really feel like the, something had to happen to the boats, right? We, we know something happened. So, you know, what makes sense? I'm sure that you're not going to capsize this boat that if you saw it in half, it still floats, okay? This Boston Whaler um, motor boat is, even though it's an imitation, this is something that, you know, when I was reading up on it, I'm like, oh my God, this sounds like the Titanic. It's like the unsinkable, right? I mean, this is supposed to be a boat that can withstand being sawed in, in a half and, and still float. So it would really take, it would really take some effort to, you know, have some weather just kind of knock this boat someplace. And, and even if it did and it destroyed it, pieces of this boat would surely find its way to someplace eventually. This paddle boat, this is something that I have seen on lakes many a times. Um, this is not something that is going to simply just go underwater, okay? This isn't like a little raft, okay? This is like a huge paddle boat thing where multiple people can sit on it and it, it, you know, it, it's just not, these things are not going to just up and disappear. We've got the three of pentacles. The three of pentacles is teamwork. That is a card where um, it is saying that there is a group effort and each person has his or her own responsibility, their part in this group effort. It takes three heads to, you know, get this thing done, but they get it done. They work well together. I feel like it was a group effort. We've got the stars. The stars literally if you look at it in terms of number it's you know uh, it, you know how many stars are in the sky i feel like this is a group effort there's more more than one i feel like a lot of people know what happened in that town and no one is talking I, i'm kind of wondering if there's like some uh i don't know i i, I kind of feel like there there's someone there's someone or something in that town or in that area and i think people are aware of it several people are aware of it Hmm. I've got the water again. Several people are aware of this. No one's saying anything. Let me ask really quick with the Rider Waite. What happened to the boats? What happened to the boats? What happened to that Boston Whaler and the paddle boat? What happened to the Boston Whaler and the paddle boat? So we've got the nine of wands again, which means, you know, number one thing I'm thinking of, pattern, numbers, power in numbers. Probably not one or two people are going to be able to go out there and, you know, get this paddle boat and this boat uh, or, or, and do something to it, destroy it, whatever. I don't know. Um, this is going, this has got to be like a group effort. This has got to be a couple of people. 
Um, and then temperance, again, I'm looking at the water. I I'm looking at the water on this one. This I think something was done to the boat in the water. And I do think that somebody did something intentionally to these boats to get rid of any kind of evidence or anything like that. This is an exchange, you know. Um, I, I, I don't know. First thing that's coming in my mind is, you know, this wealthy, I, I'm thinking there's wealth involved in this case. And I'm thinking possibly someone paid someone to go out and dismember these boats, put them you know, someplace, hide them. I don't know, tear them apart. I don't know what they did, but I kind of feel like this is somebody that is offering payment to someone who they know needs the money. Um, and in exchange, they will uh, get rid of these these boats because I, I I don't think that I I'm gonna I'm I swear to God I don't think that this was an accident. Um, what am I at? Five. Oh my God, one hour. Oh. What's one last thing that we can find out? What's what's one thing here? Will this person ever get caught? Will this person, will this case ever be solved? Is this ever going to come to a close? Are we ever going to have answers in this case? Are we ever going to have answers in this case? We could. We could. This is not a nice one. It, uh, this is okay to end with. We, we could have answers. This case could change. Um, I do believe that there are people in this town that suspect um, what happened to these boys and for whatever reason they're not talking. Um, there, there is some, I think, major secrets involving this case and that could also be why it's not a very well known case and not a very big case as far as globalization and just all the um, media attention. It, it just kind of was hushed over. It, you don't hear a lot about it. Um, but I, I feel like this could change, you know, if maybe the, per, you know, somebody says something or somebody, you know, gets tired of keeping this secret. I, I kind of feel like it, this is something that people are aware of in this town. I think, like I said, I'm going to say it again. I think that there's a parent to one of these young men that know or suspect what happened. Um, I don't know. I'm going to leave it at that, guys, because I'm already at an hour and almost eight minutes. So, um, yeah, this was an interesting one. Let me know what you guys think. But there, there's a chance. Things could change. This doesn't have to stay on solve forever. Um, it's been almost 30 years, right? We're nearing the 30-year mark. That's when my oldest son was, was born in 1995. So, you know, he'll be 26 this year, so we're, we're getting closer to the 30-year um, mark on this case being unsolved. But it doesn't have to be. It, it could change. Everything could change in a heartbeat. So let's just hope and pray that it does. And, you know, these families can have some peace and know that their loved ones are in a particular spot and know it 110% because as a mother of three boys, you know, oh God, I just, my heart just breaks for these, these families. So, um, anyway, thank you guys. Let me know what you think about the reading of any of these cards. If you picked up anything different, let me know. And until then, have a wonderful, wonderful week, guys. I will see you next week. Thank you.